everyone. How is everyone doing today? Uh, my name is Danielle Prino and I am a volunteer at the American Center in Moscow. Uh, today I will be doing a presentation for you guys uh, on Pennsylvania, which is my home state. Um, if you guys have any questions, I definitely encourage you to ask them throughout the video. Um, however, I am streaming on my phone right now, um, so I will get to the questions at the end. Um, I will also have a discussion at the end, so uh, make sure to stick around for that. Uh, so let's move on to the first slide. Uh, first of all, um, I would like to introduce a few facts about myself. Uh, like I said, my name is Danielle. Um, I am from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I'm currently studying here in Moscow. I've been living here for about four months now, uh, since January. Um, my interests include animals, uh, nature, music, and traveling. Uh, so uh, we're going to go on to the next slide now, the second slide. And I would like to share a brief introduction about Pennsylvania. Um, so you may know uh, Pennsylvania is a very rural state. Uh, there's a lot of farmlands, not a whole lot of city. Um, it is located in the northeastern part of uh, the United States. And the state itself is named after a British nobleman named uh, William Penn. Uh, the ending in Pennsylvania, Sylvania, uh, is actually the Latin word for forest land. And as you will see in uh, my next slides, uh, that name is very fitting. Uh, Pennsylvania is also the fifth largest population by state. Uh, so moving on to the third slide here. Uh, I will be talking about the history of Pennsylvania. Uh, so Pennsylvania was actually first inhabited by Native Americans, uh, such as the Susquehannock tribe. Um, it was also one of the original 13 colonies that were settled in America. Um, another fact about Pennsylvania is that it was actually the second state to ratify the US Constitution on December 12, uh, 1787. Uh, and as I said in the previous slide, um, it was named after the British nobleman, uh, William Penn. Uh, this land was actually given to him by King Charles II uh, to pay off a debt owed to him uh, to Penn's father. Um, also, on March 1st, 1780, Pennsylvania passed a legislation called an act for the gradual abolition of slavery. Um, and this was a pretty big deal because it made the state the first state to pass the legislation to abolish slavery. Uh, Pennsylvania also played a big part in the American Civil War. Um, it is home to the Battle of Gettysburg of 1863. Um, this battle was considered the most gruesome battle of the American Civil War with uh, 46,000 to 51,000 casualties from both sides of the war. Uh, so uh, the next slide here, uh, I will be discussing the geography of Pennsylvania. Uh, so in size, Pennsylvania is a relatively small state compared to other states uh, with an area of uh, 119,282 uh, square kilometers. However, in terms of geography, um, PA is actually a very unique state. Um, it's actually nicknamed the Keystone State because uh, the state actually forms a, ge a geographic bridge between the northeastern and the southern states. Uh, in addition to that, uh, five major rivers run through Pennsylvania. Uh, we have the Delaware River, the Ohio River, uh, the Monongahela River, the Allegheny River, and the Susquehanna River, which uh, was named after that uh, the the, uh, the Native American tribe that I mentioned before. Uh, Pennsylvania is a very mountainous state as well. Um, the Appalachian Mountains uh, run through the state di diagonally, which I have shown here uh, on this map. It cuts through the state almost completely in half. Um, uh, so uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, we are going to take a look at the population demographics of Pennsylvania. Uh, so Pennsylvania has a population of approximately 12,807,060 people. 
48.3% um, of that population is male and 51.7% is female. Uh, so pictured on the left here, um, there is a population estimate. Uh, it's a map. It's divided into counties. Uh, the darkest red areas are the most populous and the lightest are the least populous areas. Um, so I put a few arrows here pointing to the most populous areas. Uh, these happen to be places with the biggest cities in Pennsylvania, uh, Pittsburgh and Philadelphia. Uh, so Allegheny County on the left here is home to Pittsburgh. And of course, uh, on the right, Philadelphia County is home to Philadelphia. Uh, I also have another chart here on the right. Uh, it shows the largest ancestry groups in Pennsylvania that were surveyed in a 2010 census. So as you can see, 28.5% uh, of those people have German, German heritage, 18.2% uh, uh, have Irish heritage, 12.8% have Italian heritage, 9.6% uh, have African American heritage, and 8.5% have English heritage. 7.2% uh, have Polish heritage, 4.2% have French Canadian heritage, and the remaining 11% uh, was either unspec unspecified or other. Uh, so if we move on to the next slide here, um, I will show you some beautiful Pennsylvania state parks. I apologize if I'm shifting through papers. I'm actually streaming on my phone right now and I can't see the presentation. So I just want to make sure that I'm on topic with what you guys are seeing. Uh, so Pennsylvania actually has 121 state parks, uh, 19 national parks and seven national heritage parks. The very first uh, state park in Pennsylvania is called Valley Forge State Park, uh, which was purchased by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania on May 30th 1893. Only 0.9% of PA land is considered uh, state park land, uh, which may not seem like a lot, but only uh, Alaska and California have more park land than Pennsylvania. If you think about it, those states are much bigger than Pennsylvania. Um, state parks, uh, they also have their own form of governing body uh, called the Pennsylvania Bureau of State Parks. Um, they determine which land is considered state parks and which isn't, and they also protect uh, these bodies of land. And on the right here, I have included some pictures of our state parks. Um, so Pine Creek Gorge here is actually sometimes referred to as the Grand Canyon of Pennsylvania. Um, I've actually been there once. It's very beautiful. Um, I've been to all these places pictured uh, except for Valley Forge. I've never been there. It's uh, kind of closer to Philadelphia. Um, but as you can see, uh, Pennsylvania's woodlands are very gorgeous and diverse. Uh, so in the next slide, uh, I will be talking about the climate of Pennsylvania. Um, so Pennsylvania has what's called a humid uh, continental climate. Uh, and what this means is that there are uh, large fluctuations within the seasonal temperatures year round. Um, so July is actually the warmest month of the year with an average temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. Um, and January is the coldest month of the year uh, with an average temperature of negative two degrees Celsius. Um, our summers tend to be very long, humid, and hot, um, and our winters are very uh, cold, harsh, and snowy. The only break we really get is with uh, the fall and the spring. Those are kind of like the most comfortable times of years. Um, I prefer fall. It's a lot warmer than spring usually. Uh, and within that, uh, southeastern Pennsylvania, uh, such as where Philadelphia is, happens to be uh, the warmest part of the state. Uh, on the contrary, uh, central, uh, northeastern, and western Pennsylvania tend to have uh, colder temperatures than the rest of the state. Uh, so western Pennsylvania, which is the most mountainous part of the state, uh, can receive over 250 centimeters of snowfall annually. All right, uh, so in this next slide, uh, we'll be switching up the subject a bit and I will be discussing uh, the prevalence of Amish, Mennonite, 
and Pennsylvania Dutch groups in the state. Uh, so here's a fun fact. Uh, Pennsylvania actually leads the nation in the number of Amish communities. Um, I actually had to learn in driver's ed how to drive around horse and buggies. Um, where I'm from in Pennsylvania, it's really not that common to see someone on a horse and buggy. Uh, but in such places, such a, uh, such a central and eastern Pennsylvania, you will see a lot of Amish people uh, on the road with their horse and buggies. <laughs> Um, so like I said, most of the Amish communities in Pennsylvania are located in the central and eastern part of the state. Um, and located closer to Philadelphia, there is a city called Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and it is the oldest and most prominently known uh, Amish settlement in the state. Uh, so within the settlement, there are 25 different Amish and Mennonite church groups. Um, and within that, a lot of these Amish, uh, Mennonite, and even English people have German heritage. Uh, this is a result of um, German immigrants uh, moved, settling in Pennsylvania during the 18th and 19th century. Uh, the word Pen Pennsylvania Dutch actually has uh, two different meanings as well. It, re it can refer to the heritage of a person, but Pennsylvania Dutch within itself is actually a language that people speak. Um, uh, the majority of people who speak Pennsylvania Dutch are uh, also Mennonite or Amish. Um, a lot of the younger generations of Amish don't speak this language, uh, but the old school generation still hold, holds on to that tradition and they speak it. Uh, today, there are an estimated 300,000 or more native speakers of this language in the U.S. Uh, so in the next slide here, um, I'd like to get into talking about three major cities in Pennsylvania. Uh, so, I will be starting off with Philadelphia. Um, so, Philadelphia is uh, Pennsylvania's most populated city of over one million people. Um, it is located in the uh, southeastern part of Pennsylvania. Um, it is also home to the historical Liberty Bell, uh, which I have pictured on the right here. Um, it was also supposed to be the capital of Pennsylvania uh, when it was founded by William Penn in 1682. However, uh, this did not stick and Harrisburg went on to be the capital of Pennsylvania. Uh, Philadelphia also served as a meeting place uh, for the founding fathers during the American Revolution. Um, as a result, uh, it was also where the Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th. Uh, 1776 uh, at a, a meeting spot, which is uh, now known today as Independence Hall. Um, I believe people can go there and visit. I think it might be a museum. Uh, and last but not, and certainly not least, uh, Philadelphia is known for the Philadelphia cheesesteaks. I personally never had one, um, but they're very popular in Pennsylvania. Uh, so here in the next slide, um, I will be talking about uh, Pennsylvania's capital, which is Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, so Harrisburg became the capital of Pennsylvania in October of 1812. Um, although it is the capital, it is only the 15th largest city in Pennsylvania. Um, so it's located in about uh, central Pennsylvania. Um, it's a very rural area. Um, it's not a big city like Pittsburgh or Philadelphia. Um, it's quite small. Uh, Harrisburg also played a very important part in the American Civil War. Um, it served as a training base uh, for the Northern Army. Also, um, there is a city uh, named uh, Hershey, which is by Harrisburg. Uh, so who here has ever had a Hershey bar? Um, I'm sure most of you have had one, or if not, you've probably seen uh, the Hershey bar brand in supermarkets all over the world. Uh, this city is, of course, named after that famous chocolate brand. Um, that is where the brand originated from, and they actually have a huge amusement park there where you can see how the chocolate is made. Uh, they have a bunch of rides that are like chocolate-based, and it's really a cool place. 
Uh, besides that, uh, Harrisburg is home to the Pennsylvania Farm Show, which is the largest agricultural event across the nation. So that gives you an idea of how, you know, rural that area is. A lot of my friends go there to uh, show their livestock every year. Uh, so moving on to the next slide, I will be telling you about the city where I'm from, uh, which is Pittsburgh. Um, I may be a little bit biased on this topic because I'm from there, but I definitely think that this city is the most interesting out of the three. Um, so a nickname for Pittsburgh is Steel City, um, and this is because um, during the 20th century, uh, Pittsburgh quickly became one of the most industrialized cities in the United States during that time. Steel mills were so prevalent that Pittsburgh became the center of the American steel industry. Um, this provided ample job opportunities and attracted many European immigrants to the city. A lot of these immigrants were Eastern European, Italian, Irish, stuff like that. And by the year 1920, um, Pittsburgh was the largest community of Polish immigrants in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, this is especially reflected uh, today of the culture of Pittsburgh. Um, Nowadays, uh, Pittsburgh has shifted its economy from industrialization uh, to healthcare, education, and technological industries. Um, there's a lot of major uh, universities in Pittsburgh, such as the University of Pittsburgh and um, just a bunch of different uh, schools. Uh, Pittsburgh is also known for the love of sports. Um, they have many of uh, us professional sports teams, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers, which is uh, their football team, uh, the Pittsburgh Penguins, which is their hockey team, and the Pittsburgh Pirates, which is their baseball team. Uh, in the next slide here, I actually have a video uh, of the Pittsburgh Penguins trying to guess Pittsburgh slang. Uh, Pittsburgh people actually talk in a very strange way. They have a bunch of slang, which is actually called Pittsburghese is what they call it. Um, and in 2014, Pittsburgh was voted to have the worst accent in America. So I'll let you guys be the judge of that. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at this video and see if you guys can guess the slang meetings along in the chat. Wash? No clue. No. Say that again, sir. Wash? I don't know, it's water? Uh, maybe it's like a type of food? A soup? It sounds bad, so, so I'm gonna say it's like something relatively bad. Water? No, alright. Wash. Wash? Uh, pass. I don't know, cricket? I don't know. It's like crap? Creek. 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 A creek. Creek. Bear. Uh, sprinkles. I heard that before, but I don't know what it means, I guess. <laughs> no idea. No, I don't know. It's a restaurant. No, I was I was at Jimmy's yesterday. A sandwich. What's work? Uh, pajamas. Underwear. Candy. Sprinkles? Subway. Like a broom? Sweeper that's like broom? Something to do with a broom? Uh, like a broom? Uh, broom? Uh, broom? Nope. Uh, broom? I don't know. Is it broom? Uh, vacuum? <laughs> Someone who falls? <laughs> Slippers? Slip and slide? Slippers. Type of drink. Next. Slippery. Like a slide, maybe? I don't know. Uh, slippery. Slippy. Slippery. Gum. No idea. Rubber band. <laughs> like tough. Gum band. I have a gum. Oh, gum bands. It's like a 
Gummy bands, no? Gum band? Gum band. I have no idea. Oh, rubber band. <laughs> Apparently, I didn't live in the right city for 15 years, I guess. Big? 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 Big, huge, like a jumbo hot dog. Jumbo is bologna. How do you get that? Soda, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Coca-Cola, whatever it is. Soda. It's like uh, dead, like, like fire, right? Uh, soda. 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 Pop. Like soda? Soda pop? Yeah, pop. I know pop. That's that's Canadian too. No one yet. Red up. Uh, stop. Nope. Ready to go. Uh, I don't know that one. Uh, I don't know. No idea. Wake up. Get up. Of soda? No. No. No idea. I have no idea. Red up is clean up. Uh -huh. Do they say Chesterfield here? Do they still say that? Like a sofa? Chesterfield? No. No? <laughs> Alright, so what did you guys think of that? Uh, did you get any of them right? Um, there were some slang in that video that they didn't mention that I personally think are very important to uh, learning Pittsburghese, uh, and that is yins. Uh, yins is very specific to Pittsburgh. Uh, Pittsburghers use this term to refer to a group of people. Uh, so it's kind of like y'all, like you all, uh, but you say yins. And another word is yinzer. Um, that is what someone from Pittsburgh is called uh, because they use the word yins. And also, uh, people from Pittsburgh, for some reason, can't say the word steel correctly. Uh, they say still. So you wouldn't say the Pittsburgh Steelers. You would say the Pittsburgh Stillers. Um, I personally don't think I talk like that, but I don't think I can hear my own accent. Um, so moving on to the next slide, um, I will show you some famous people from Pennsylvania. Uh, so he here we have uh, Will Smith. Uh, he is an he's an actor. He is from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, Kevin Hart. Uh, he's a comedian. He is also from uh, Philadelphia. Then we have Taylor Swift and Christina Aguilera. Uh, they're singers. I'm not sure exactly where in Pennsylvania they're from, but they were born there. And we have Fred Rogers, uh, Mr. Rogers from the TV show, uh, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Um, he is actually from Lee Trobe, which is where I live currently. So that's pretty cool. Uh, then we have Arnold Palmer, who was a fam famous golfer. Uh, he was also from Lee Trobe. Um, does anyone on that list surprise you? Like, did you know that these people from are from Pennsylvania? Um, do you know anyone else from Pennsylvania that I haven't mentioned? Like, uh, definitely let me know in the chat. And I'll take a look at them. Uh, so in the next slide here, uh, we will be watching another video. Uh, this video will be about Groundhog Day. Uh, this holiday is celebrated widely across the United States. Um, but it is special to Pennsylvania uh, because this event is actually held in uh, Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Uh, the groundhog lives there in his little groundhog mansion. Uh, they treat him very well. I've actually been there. Uh, he lives in this uh, library and supposedly he's like over 100 years old. Like this groundhog has been to every groundhog day. I can't confirm if that's true or not, but uh, let's go ahead and start the video. It is the Super Bowl of weather. Bring out the bicycles and springtime toys. All hail groundhog supremacy. On the second day of February each year, the groundhog gets its moment, especially this little guy. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Punxsutawney Phil! He's the world's most famous groundhog, and he makes his prediction of when winter will end every year in front of thousands of fans at a big party in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Phil makes his guess based on whether he sees his shadow. If he does, it's six more weeks of winter. If not, we're in for an early spring. The roots of Groundhog Day are centuries old. February 2nd is known as Candlemas Day, when Christians would take out their candles to church to have them blessed, and this would bring blessings to their homes for the rest of winter. This traditional belief made its way to Germany, and that's where the lore got its very first mascot, a hedgehog. The Germans believed this little guy could predict the weather. And as German settlers moved to the States, so did the belief. The problem was there were hardly any hedgehogs in America. Groundhogs, on the other hand, well, there were a lot of them. And the mighty groundhog became the face of the lore. The first official Groundhog Day celebration was in 1887, and it eventually turned into a whole thing. Who's thinking spring? Nowadays, Phil is always surrounded by a bunch of guys in top hats and tuxedos. They're called the Inner Circle, also known as Punxsutawney Phil's Hype Guys. You have to understand something. There are two entities in the world that are infallible, the Pope and Punxsutawney Phil. Phil will tell his prediction to the president of the Inner Circle, who is supposedly the only person who understands Phil's language, called Groundhogese. This is more of a body language. He might communicate with just a little wink. The vice president then pulls out one of two scrolls, each with a different prediction, and tells everyone the news. There is no shadow of me. A beautiful spring, it shall be! Now the Groundhog Day party has become a tradition in places all over North America, each with their own version of Punxsutawney Phil. There's Staten Island Chuck, Buckeye Chuck, Jimmy the Groundhog, Dunkirk Dave, and in Canada, there's Wired and Willie, Shubanakity Sam, and Balzac Billy. So how often are groundhogs right anyway? Phil's track record is actually pretty terrible. He's right about 40% of the time, meaning you're better off flipping a coin. But this might be a case of broken telephone. Phil's predictions are always 100% correct. However, some people think he's wrong. Most likely our president has misinterpreted what Phil had predicted in the first place. Whatever the case may be, people are just hoping to hear some good news. Everybody's looking for some way to alleviate that feeling of being miserable all the time, and Groundhog Day does that for us. That's reason enough for many people to give the spotlight to these furry forecasters just once a year. Thanks for watching Global News. If you want to stay up to date on the latest breaking national. All right. Uh, so that explains kind of the crazy tradition of Groundhog Day in both America and Pennsylvania. Um, so that was actually the last of my slides. So I will go ahead and I will uh, answer some questions now. Let me see. Okay, what does Pennsylvania Dutch mean? Uh, that's from Sergey. Um, so uh, Pennsylvania Dutch, um, it, it means uh, it's a language. Uh, so it's something that people in Pennsylvania speak. Um, it also refers to um, the people who are, you know, generations past, like the German immigrants that uh, settled in Pennsylvania in the 18th and 19th century. Uh, the second question here, uh, thank, hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, how do you make the wor world famous Philly cheese steak? Um, that's a very good question. Um, I've never made it. Um, it's just basically, from what I know, it's just uh, like a piece of like hoagie bread that's like cut in half uh, with some beef in it and cheese. Uh, I've never had one. Um, so here's another question. Um, have you heard anything about the scandalous child sale in Luzerne County State of Pennsylvania, which was discovered in 2009? Um, no, I actually haven't uh, heard of that. Um, I was quite young in 2009, so I'm not aware of that uh, event. Can you tell us about the capital of Pennsylvania? 
Uh, so like I said, um, Harrisburg is the capital of Pennsylvania. Um, it's quite a small city compared to the other um, cities in Pennsylvania. Um, is it true that Pennsylvania houses the Edgar Allan Poe Museum? Uh, that's a good question. Um, I'm actually not sure about that one. I wasn't aware that there was a museum of Edgar Allan Poe, but I will definitely Google that after that. I, I look forward to seeing that because I, I like Edgar Allan Poe. I would like to go to his museum. Um, does Pennsylvania have any sort of reputation in the United States? Uh, what comes to the mind of Americans living outside of Pennsylvania when they hear the word Pennsylvania? Uh, that's, that's a good one. Um, you know, I like to think that they think positive things. I, I don't think that Pennsylvania has a negative reputation, but I think a lot of people think that Pennsylvania is just, you know, one big farm. Like, there's just nothing but, you know, trees and grass and cows. And they're not wrong, but, I yeah, I wouldn't say that they have, you know, an extreme reputation in the United States. Um, and here's a question um, about the state parks. Uh, can you tell about your own opinion of visiting these parks? Are they lar large parks? Um, so I've been to quite a few uh, state parks in Pennsylvania. Uh, they can range to just being like a couple uh, acres to being massive. Um, um, the parks that I showed in the pictures, um, they're quite uh, large parks. Oops, hold on. Sorry, there's a bit questions here. Um, yeah, I mean, some of them are large, um, like uh, Lynn Run, that's a park in Pennsylvania. Uh, it's huge. There's several different park, uh, parts of it. Uh, it's on a mountain. Uh, can you tell us about the national events of Pennsylvania? Um, I'm not sure exactly uh, what kind of uh, national events you may be referring to. Uh, yeah, mm, I'm not sure about that one. Uh, what can you say that it that a significant part of films directed by M. Night Shyamalan, such as The Sixth Sense, uh, Invul Invulnerable, uh, were shot in Philadelphia? Um, you know, I've never saw these films. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not uh, a big movie person. Um, I actually didn't know that those were shot in Philadelphia, but thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, you're adding some knowledge to mine of Pennsylvania. Uh, can you say a few words about national food of Pennsylvania? Um, yeah, um, so Pennsylvania is known for quite a bit of different foods that aren't enjoyed in other states. Um, one of them being pierogies. Uh, like I said, um, Polish people uh, immigrated to Pittsburgh and left a pretty big cultural footprint in the city. Um, uh, Pittsburgh food is like pierogies, like uh, for family dinners, like, like there's usually pierogies at the table. And of course, uh, on the other end of Pennsylvania, we have the Philly cheesesteaks, which I can't say anything about because I've never had one, but there's that. Um, let me food. Um, we also have something called uh, a whoopie pie, with dirt, which is basically like two pieces of cake sandwiched on top of each other with like cream in the middle. Uh, I think that's specific to Pennsylvania. Um, yeah, I think those are, you know, pretty significant. Uh, can you tell about the educational aspect of Pennsylvania? Um, well, my personal experience, uh, public school there is pretty uh, standard to uh, American public schools. Um, there are a lot of uh, major universities in Pennsylvania. Uh, there is uh, Penn State, um, uh, the University in Pittsburgh. Those are state schools, and there's some other uh, non-state schools uh, there as well, but those are the two main ones, and those are pretty famous universities. Uh, the University of Pitt uh, does a lot for 
the uh, medical field as well. Um, I believe that they started, uh, you know, working on a vaccine for the COVID-19 virus. Um, so that's pretty cool. That is wonderful to know about chocolate Hershey. Yeah, I think that's so cool. I mean, you know, this entire city is like based around that chocolate brand. Like they market off of it. And, you know, like I said, they have that theme park, which is very cool. I, I went there when I was a kid. Uh, they have this one ride where you actually like you're you're like in this cart and you're going through like the factory of making the chocolate and it's pretty cool. What places do you recommend visiting in Pennsylvania? Uh, so that's the last question here. Um, uh, that's a good question. I would probably recommend visiting uh, Pittsburgh first. Um, they have um, a lot of museums. The Carnegie Science Museum is one of them. Uh, they have a natural history museum and they also have uh, Heinz Field, I forgot to mention. Uh, the Heinz ketchup brand actually uh, originated in Pittsburgh as well. I'm sure you've seen Heinz ketchup. You know, they have it everywhere. Um, so Heinz Field is like where the Steelers play their games. Um, so yeah, I recommend visiting Pittsburgh. And then we have Malkin. He's a Russian hockey player. Yep, there's a lot of, you know, Russian hockey players uh, playing for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, where do you live in Pennsylvania? Um, I live in southwestern Pennsylvania, uh, just outside of uh, Pittsburgh, um, in uh, Latro, Pennsylvania, which, like I mentioned before, um, Fred Rogers and Arnold Palmer are from there. Uh, uh, remember the movie with Bill Murray? Yes, Groundhog Day, that's a good movie. Phil is too funny. Yeah, Punk's Tony Phil. He's incredible. Um, does fossil oil industry exist till now? Um, I would say uh, fossil oil wasn't a big uh, industry in Pennsylvania. Like I said, um, uh, Pittsburgh was steel. I think that steel and um, materials such as that were uh, prominent in Pennsylvania. What is the most distinguishing feature of your state? All right, I have to think about this one. Um, I would say um, probably the geography of Pennsylvania. Um, I've been to a lot of states, but Pennsylvania is very beautiful. Uh, no matter where you go, you will see like this big lush forests and uh, mountains. Uh -huh. Do you have a stay at home rule now? How strict is it if it exists? Um, well, I'm actually in Moscow right now, but I have been uh, talking to my family about what's going on in Pennsylvania right now. Um, I, I, I do believe that the state is uh, shutting down. There is a stay at home rule. You're only allowed to go to the grocery store. Um, and if you do go to the grocery store, you must wear a mask. You will not be serviced unless you wear a mask. Have you mentioned Picklesburg? No, I have not mentioned Picklesburg. Uh, Pittsburgh is, uh, Picklesburg is an event that is held annually in Pittsburgh where they celebrate pickles. And it, it's crazy. They have like a big pickle. Uh, it's, it's set on a bridge in Pittsburgh and there's a bunch of vendors selling uh, like pickled flavored beer, like just anything pickle that you can imagine. Uh, could you possibly direct me to Pennsylvania and specifically Philadelphia historical archives, especially those that are accessible online? I am researching Doc Holliday, who studied at the Philadelphia Dental College. Uh, later, the college became part in Penn. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sure about that question. Um... Yeah, I, I apologize. I, I'm not sure where you would find uh, such such an archive like that. Uh, how do you feel about the movie Groundhog Day with Murray? Um, I think it's a funny movie. It's a good one. Um, do you have Italian origins? Yes, I do. Um, 
my uh, family on my dad's side is uh, Italian, hence my last name, Perino. Uh, but I also have uh, a lot of uh, Polish on my mother's side. Do you think Pennsylvania is the most interesting state? Um, you know, that, that's a complicated question. Um, I would say yes, just because I'm from there. Um, but I, <laughs> yeah, I would say it's the most interesting. I've been to a lot of places and I just appreciate the quiet, you know, just the quiet uh, state of Pennsylvania. I don't like big cities like uh, in New York. So let's see here. Was there any protest rally against stay at home order the same as with Michigan? Um, I think so. I, I do think that some people were protesting, um, especially like wearing masks and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure exactly, but I have been seeing on the news that that's been happening all over the states. Uh, if Will Smith is from Pennsylvania, can you recall his songs and films with his participation? Um, the only thing that I can say off the top of my head uh, that Will Smith was in uh, was that TV show that he was on that was uh, based off his life in Philadelphia. Because, you know, you think of the like the intro song to that, like West, West Philadelphia, born and raised. That's the only thing I know <laughs> about Will Smith. Uh, do people recycle a lot there? Um, where I live, I live in a little suburban neighborhood. Uh, they, I do see people uh, putting out recycling bins a lot. Um, I, I can't speak for the rest of the state, but I, yeah, I would say people recycle quite a bit here. Okay. So I think that might be uh, the last of the questions here. Oh, there's, there's another one. Uh, how popular is it to have arm guns? Um, yeah, I would say that is a common thing to uh, own a gun in Pennsylvania. Um, especially because uh, hunting is a very popular uh, sport in Pennsylvania. A lot of people are, they hunt white-tailed deer every year. Um, so I would say that the average Pennsylvania household at least has, like, not like a hunting rifle, but like maybe a gun to uh, protect the home. What is the average salary in Pennsylvania? How much is it necessary to live there? Um, I'm not sure about the average salary exactly. Um, but, uh, I would say this, the state itself is not a very expensive place to live compared to other states. Um, especially when you're living in, uh, maybe like a small town in Pennsylvania, not in necessarily in like a big city such as like Pittsburgh or, uh, Philadelphia. Tell us more about your interest in animals and nature. Uh, well, thank you for showing interest in my interests. Um, I love animals. Um, I've always loved animals. I used to be a horseback rider. Uh, I had a horse. Uh, now I have a lovely frog named Gilbert, who I miss very much. Uh, he's back at home right now. Uh, my mom's taking care of him for me. What brought you to Ma Moscow and how do you like it? Um, uh, I actually came to Moscow uh, last year in April with my friends. Um, we were just coming here to, um, you know, just to go on a vacation. I'd never left the country before, um, and I was kind of interested in Russian culture. So we came here, and ever since then, I couldn't keep away. Um, I've been there uh, three times uh, since, uh, since last year. And uh, this time I'm actually staying here for six months and I am going to school here. Uh, so in short, I, I love it here. It's, it's great. 
is hunting or fishing free? Um, no, you have to uh, pay for a registration every year. Um, I used to register to go fishing. I think it's uh, about 34 US dollars to get a license to fish. Um, and you can only fish at uh, like certain like lakes and uh, you can only catch certain fish uh, or else you might get a fine. Can you tell about the state capital of Pennsylvania? Um, yeah, it, like I said before, uh, it's Harrisburg. Um, it's a little, just a little uh, city in the uh, middle of Pennsylvania. Um, it's quite small compared to uh, the other big cities in Pennsylvania. So let's see if we have more questions here. Have you been fishing or hunting there? Um, I've never been hunting, but I used to go fishing a lot. Uh, I like to go fishing. Like I said, uh, I, I kind of stopped doing it because it does get expensive to uh, renew the license every year. Um, I think that there is a way to like pay for several years at a time, but I've only done it annually. And about State Museum of Pennsylvania. Um, I'm not sure about uh, a state museum. Um, I'm not sure exactly where that is. Can you tell us more about the Amish? What do Pennsylvanians think about them? Do you know any Amish people? Um, I would say that Pennsylvanians are quite uh, familiar with them uh, since we, you know, we all live together. Um, I don't personally know any Amish people. Uh, where I'm from, uh, there's not many. Um, they're mostly located in central and uh, southeastern Pennsylvania, um, so I, I don't see them often where I'm from. Before you said you like quiet places for living, but Moscow is huge. Why do you like it? Um, because sometimes it's good to step away from what you're used to and just, you know, swishing it up for a bit. It's nice to have a change every once in a while. What is the difference between German and Pennsylvania Dutch? Um, I am not sure about like the actual differences in the language. I just uh, know that Pennsylvania Dutch is, uh, it evolved from the German language itself. I'm sorry, I was asking you about Pennsylvania State Capitol. Can you tell about it in the State Museum of Pennsylvania? Um, I am not sure about that. Uh, I'm not uh, quite familiar with those subjects. Um, does the town of Hershey smell like chocolate? Um, I'm not sure. Um, I haven't been there in a very long time, so I couldn't say that, but I would imagine that it does. So let's see here. Are those the questions? Are there any holidays, any other holidays or celebrations in Pennsylvania that don't exist outside of Pennsylvania? Um, I don't think so. Not that I know of or have celebrated. Uh, I would say that they celebrate just national holidays. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so I actually have a few questions for you guys. Um, I was waiting for you guys to uh, ask your questions. Now it's my turn to ask you guys questions. Um, so my first question is, have any of you been to Pennsylvania? Uh, if so, uh, which city happens to be your favorite? Um, if you haven't been to Pennsylvania uh, since watching my presentation, uh, would you guys like to go there sometime? Um, and my final question is, um, if you've been to the United States or if you are living there right now, uh, which states have you been to? Okay, we have a couple more questions here, so I'll read them while you guys uh, write some responses. Was any repression against citizens with German roots during World War II? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, I, I do know that there were... Uh, Mm, there were repressions with most immigrants and in Pittsburgh in the United States. Uh, a lot of people wanted them to be segregated from the rest of the people. Uh, they weren't treated very well since a lot of them were, you know, factory workers uh, and they didn't speak English. So a lot of people would, you know, push them around. Do you speak Polish? No, I do not. I, um, I speak English and I'm working on speaking Russian now. Uh, would you like to stay in Pennsylvania or move to another state? Um, I, I think I would like to stay in Pennsylvania. Uh, maybe I'd like to move to another city someday, but um, yeah, I think I would prefer to stay there. Uh, what is the most challenging being in Russia? Hmm. Um, I would say... Uh, not being fluent in Russian, that's challenging. Uh, not everyone here speaks English, and I certainly don't expect them to. So it, it can be difficult for me to uh, get around. All right, so let me take a look at your answers. Oh, you think Pen Pennsylvania is the most interesting state? That's nice. Uh, someone here said they've been to Philly, uh, Valley Forge, Pittsburgh from Penn State. Um, Pennsylvania, Florida, New York, Washington, Chicago. It's quite a few places. <laughs> a few people say they haven't been there. That's okay. You could definitely go there one day. I recommend Pennsylvania 100%. Um, I've been to Pittsburgh, but only for half a day, but I really like the bridges. Yes, Pittsburgh is also no known as uh, Three Rivers because there are three rivers that run through uh, the city, and there's a lot of bridges, a ton of bridges. I would like to go to Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for your wonderful lecture. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Do you have any mon monument of Rockefeller? I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> Let me take a look here. All right. Um, well, I guess that uh, wraps up uh, the discussion. Um, sorry. <laughs> hey, let me see. Someone's typing. What song do you associate with your home state? Um, I would probably say Black and Yellow by Wiz Khalifa, just because I'm, he's, he's from Pittsburgh, and I, I'm pretty sure he wrote that song, uh, because Black and Yellow is the, um, colors of, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers and many of their sports teams. Uh, what do you want to study? Um, well, right now I want to study, um, 
Russian language, I want to get proficient with that. And then perhaps um, I would like to continue uh, my university studies here, uh, maybe getting into uh, biology as my major. If not, I would probably uh, continue my education in the United States uh, studying biology as well. <laughs> Thanks a lot for sincere answers. You're welcome. I'm just here to, you know, be myself and explain where I'm from. <laughs> Let's see how much time we have left. Maybe a few more questions. Okay. All right. Thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Um, that completes my presentation of Pennsylvania. I really appreciate everyone who came in and asked questions. Um, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, and of course, uh, let, let us know what you thought of this program by leaving a like or a comment uh, on the video um, and make sure to subscribe to, subscribe to our channel. Uh, and also follow us on social media so that we can learn, connect, and produce together. Bye, everyone.